All right, so I've had a couple people ask me to do a video of my sump setup, so I just decided to do a video about the whole technical setup about my tank. Uh, so there's really nothing special about it. The light I'm running is a Phoenix 4x T5 fixture, uh, but I have modified it with an additional ballast and I'm running six T5s on this tank. They run for about eight hours a day total with some uh, different sequences of bulbs to simulate like sunset and sunrise. Uh, right now I have three blue plus, one purple plus, and two aqua blue specials, all from ATI. I recently changed it out and the corals seem a lot happier. They all changed in color to be a little bit brighter and the tank looks a little bit crisper so really happy with those bulbs. Other than that, uh, not sure how much live rock I have in there but you can see it's enough obviously. I'm going to do another video soon updating my tank's progress. As you see, if you've seen some of my other videos, a lot has changed. So, anyway. So, the overflow I have, bought off Amazon, don't remember what brand it is. But basically, uh, it's a siphon type overflow. A lot of people are worried about it breaking siphon and basically flooding their tank, but I've never had that happen. In fact, even when I turn the return pump off from the sump, and the siphon stops, if I turn the pump back on, it automatically restarts, which is kind of nice, uh, nice physics law there. Anyway, this has a little pre-filter right there before it goes down to the sump, and uh, it's good because I've had this little guy, which is a baby gold stripe maroon clown, he gets sucked down the overflow several times, and he always gets caught at that pre-filter. So, anyway, kind of regular drain setup, just drains down to the bottom. By the way, I have a Coralia Nano power head here in the front, and I'm running a 750 in the back here along the side. So, as you can see, drain from the back comes through. I do normally have this pipe here supported by some zip ties, but uh, you know, it's kind of rigged up and it has since come apart. But I run a filter sock on there. It's the 200 micron filter. That's been one of the best investments I've made for my tank because it clears up all the sandstorms and stuff very quickly. Uh, the only drawback is it can become a nitrate factory, but as long as you wash it out every week or so, it seems to be okay. And I replace it every few months. So anyway, skimmer that I'm running. Oh. Before I forget, I do have a UV sterilizer in there. The only reason I have that in there is because I bought it for a freshwater tank and decided to just stick it in here, see what it does. It doesn't really seem to be making a difference, so I might be taking that out soon. The skimmer I'm running is a Aqua Sea Urchin. I forget what pump's on there. It's just the one that came with it on Amazon. Uh, it seems to do a pretty good job. This skimmate level right now is from about a week, so it doesn't really pull that much skimmate out. I don't know if that's because my tank isn't generating that much waste, but more likely is that uh, maybe the skinner, skimmer is not just performing like it should. Just have a generic heater in there. Uh, luckily, the temperature has never really been an issue. It's currently at about like 78 degrees. Uh, I don't have to run a chiller on it because I run an open top, as you can see, which sucks because you know a lot of water evaporates, but. Not that big of a deal, just fill it up. Uh, anyway, so basically the water drains in from this, uh, the overflow goes in, there's a baffle here, which has since come apart a little bit because the silicone I used didn't end up being too strong. I really should redo that, but eh, not that big of a deal. So the water goes through, I don't know if you can see it too good, but drains through the bottom there, goes into the chamber with the skimmer, which then, is supposed to be draining over the top of this baffle going going under another one and over a third into the refugium chamber. I will say that I made this up myself uh, after doing a bunch of research on the internet and those baffles were originally put in for uh, to reduce the bubbles from the skimmer, but that skimmer does not output any bubbles, so they're really unnecessary. 
If I was gonna do it again with that same type of skimmer, I probably wouldn't even have those in there. Uh, it is kind of nice because it reduces the water level from here to down here, um, which gives it a little bit of a buffer in case the power goes out, which has happened several times and luckily it didn't overflow. So, and by the way, this sump is a 20 long. It fits perfectly in this cabinet. Uh, anyway, in Refugium, as you can see, I have a buttload of uh, Cheeto and some other macro algaes in there and a little bit of live rock. And there's a ton of copepods that live in there and amphipods or whatever, I can't tell the difference. Um, and they seem to be do, doing pretty good. They do cycle through to the main tank. And this guy, if you can see him. Anyway, it's a dragonette. He tends to consume them a lot. Yeah, doesn't want to focus. There you go. That guy likes to eat them. So he's probably trying to right now. But anyway. So. Anyway, so it drains from the refugium into this return pump chamber which then of course pumps it back up to the top. I have a little piece of PVC in there reinforcing that baffle because as I mentioned, the silicone I used kind of sucked and uh, you know, that baffle also came loose but putting that PVC pipe there has seemed to help a little bit. Um, I forget what the gallons per hour is on that pump. It's just a Via Aqua. Uh, it's a VA2300 and it does a great job. It definitely puts out enough water. As you can see, the return doing pretty nicely. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would go with something a little bit more powerful, um, just because I do have this valve on there to regulate the power, and it's fully open all the, or fully closed rather all the time. Um, I'd like to have a little bit more power, but anyway, so we have it return plumbed. Does it just come straight up? There's a T here. I got this off a, a forum. I didn't invent this, so I can't take credit for it, but uh, it just goes out this way. This valve here, if I were to open it, it would reduce the flow in the top. Oops. Reduce the flow in the top and all the water would just get recycled back into the skimmer chamber. And uh, if I needed to ever reduce the flow for whatever reason, that would come in handy. However, I have never had to, so I've never really used it. What you can use it for though, is if you put a little hose bib right here, for a standard garden hose, you can use it to do a, a water change without having to siphon out the display tank. However, when I do water changes, I siphon out the display tank anyway because it's a good opportunity to, um, you know, get rid of some unwanted waste in there. Anyway, so as I said, it's fully closed right now. It goes back to the back, just takes a 90 up, returns up here, and I have it teed off here. One side goes in this little spray bar that is made by drilling holes in a in a drip irrigation riser. And it just sprays across the top, which, you know, I was hoping it would give it some kind of shimmer effect, but it doesn't really. If I had metal halides, it really would, but uh, at the least, it keeps the water flowing good. And the other side goes down. There's another spray bar. It's kind of hard to tell. There's a spray bar that just sprays straight out. Right where this zinnia is. So it's kind of clogged up with coral and algae, but uh, there's a bunch of holes in it. And then if you can see, there is two spouts, one right there, one that's hidden behind a rock um, that just kind of spread the flow in the back. One of the main things I wanted to accomplish when I was designing this is make sure there's water flow everywhere because, uh, you know, no water flow means you're going to get a lot of buildup of stuff you don't want, like algae and stuff like that. And uh, my, algae, my tank's been doing pretty good algae-wise. Uh, there's a little bit back there. I think it's actually it's either cyanobacteria or it's diatoms. Regardless, they're pretty much fueled by the same thing, which is excess nitrates and silicates and what have you. And uh, I'm sure people know a lot more, more about that than I do. But anyway, uh, the last thing I have in my sump, you can't really see it. The last thing I have on my sump is a phosphate reactor, which is very hard to see from here. But what I'm running in there is the, I think it's made by Camp Marine, I'm not sure, but it's the denitrate media. And I have a little pump also 
believe it was via Aqua. Um, and that just, you know, if you know how reactors work, it just cycles water through the media and returns it right back into the return pump chamber. And it actually does work. Uh, my nitrates have stayed below 10 parts per million, uh, which is good for this setup from what I've experienced in the past. So it does work. I mean, nothing makes up for water changes, but they do definitely help. I should have got a more powerful pump for that because it doesn't stir up the media at all. Um, and you kind of want it to be moving a little bit so it doesn't get built up. So I'll probably upgrade that pump in the future. The light setup that I have over my refugium is just very simple. It's a 75 watt equivalent CFL bulb that is running, uh, I think the color is 10K daylight. Uh, you can just get it at Lowe's or Home Depot, my workplace actually. And uh, I have it plugged into this cheap little socket to regular power outlet adapter. I just have it plugged in there, rigged up with some zip ties to a cheap little extension cord that's like, you know, three feet long and plugged into a timer. So the algae in my refugium hasn't grown as fast as some people's. Um, I don't know if that's because my light isn't powerful enough. You might want to go with the 100 watt. The last thing I'll talk about is just my electrical setup which is terrible, do not do it like this. Uh, what I should have done is got some power strips, screwed them up inside the cabinet, up out of the you know path of the water. Um, it's not good to do it like this, so I really need to change it. I just don't have a lot of room in there. But I have everything on those little manual mechanical timers, and I label them because, you know, it took me like six months to label them. Should have done it earlier, but uh, label them, you know, just to make it a little bit easier to keep track of things. I have them all on timers, so there's like, you know, five or six timers or something under there running the lights. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Um, sorry the video is so long, but I don't know how to say things short enough, apparently. Uh, last thing I will mention is build your own cabinet because it's a ripoff if you buy one from your local fish store, usually. Um, I paid somewhere around, yeah, like 200 bucks for this cabinet, and it's not even that good of a cabinet. So, you know, I wish I would have built it. I was just being lazy. So yeah, uh, oh yeah, one last tip. I have only ever used RODI water in this tank, and I can tell you right now, it's saved me a whole bunch of headaches. So I highly recommend either finding a, a you know local place to buy RODI water or just getting a setup yourself. I haven't invested in one myself because I have a fish store nearby that can supply it pretty cheaply. Uh, it helps so much keeping your tank parameters under control. So RODI water, RODI water and do water changes is, you know, as you're supposed to and your tank will always do good for the most part. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any other questions, just uh, feel free to either message me or leave me a comment. Like I said, look out soon. I'm going to be doing an update video with a bunch of pictures and some cool stuff. So, all right. Thanks for watching.